Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to share a new piece of software with you, a piece of open source software, which is called a Patchmon, which is kind of monitoring tool for the Linux patch monitoring, made simpler, made smarter, and made scalable. The project itself is like pretty much young and, and new, and there's still a lot of uh, features and functionality to create and to develop. But uh, even at these early stages, I think it's getting a very solid attention from uh, people and everyone who tries it out. And it already has almost uh, 1.3 thousand stars in a GitHub. Long story short, like what the Patchmon actually is. So monitor Linux patches across all your hosts with the real-time visibility, security, update tracking, and comprehensive package management. The problem system uh, administrators face is lack of visibility, time constraints, security risks, scale challenges. And if we talk in a, in a simple words, we're talking about like uh, monitoring the patches, packages, security updates on your Linux servers. And if you are a system administrator, you probably have like hundreds or even thousands of those servers. And it's not so easy to follow through all of that stuff, right? And uh, the thing that I like the most is all of the installations. It's so much thought about... Uh, about a user it's just one single command and voila everything works like it's super simple you don't need to read through all sort of different documentations to get it up and running and that's what i am also about to show you like if you want to run a patchmon there are basically two options first of all you can go with a patchmon cloud membership so kind of have the patchmon server and the front end hosted in the cloud uh at the same time like supporting um the creator of this beautiful project if you're just starting out and want to try it out yourself as you can see there is uh, also an enterprise tier which is going to be built for you customly so just reach out and you will get a uh, good support i'm sure and there's also a self-hosted option self-manage patchmon on your own infrastructure free forever unlimited hosts unlimited users all features included a gplv3 license uh from limitations as it usually goes with the with the open source community support only community training and onboarding community feature request priority so as a continuation of this video i'm going to show you how you actually can set it up um i will do that through the docker so what we will have to do is choose a self-hosted option free forever click on a docker that will open us uh github page of the patchmon and patchmon docker so quick start Production deployment, download the Docker Compose file. And for the sake of this tutorial, I have my WSL machine, Alma Linux 9. I will make directory patchmon uh, YouTube, YouTube, yes, and move to the directory. I think I already have some folder from the previous test. So Docker Compose file, there's the link, just open it. And basically what we can do is copy the raw file uh, open our uh, WSL, uh, create a patchmon.yaml file, which is going to be our compose, and just copy paste everything. Uh, for the sake of uh, not making any silly mistakes, I will just save the content right now and uh, open the file again because to successfully get this up and running, like this might seem pretty much complicated for someone who doesn't have any experience with the Docker specifically but uh, we have everything documented like we're free to close this yaml file we just need to read through the steps required so set a database password in the file where it says environment postgres password so we can just copy this and go back to wsl and just search for postgres password here it is postgres password and uh, delete the comment part and I will call it testing one, two, three. So what else do we need to do? Uh, update the corresponding database URL with your password in the backend service where it says database URL and then PostgreSQL, Poshmon user, replace your Postgres password here. So go back to WSL. Uh, basically, I can already see that it is this one. Uh, so we are deleting the part with replace your Postgres pass password and replacing it with a testing one to three. So what else do we have? Set a Redis password in the Redis service command where it says command Redis server. 
So let's copy paste this just to make our life easier. Escape, search. There it is. Redis server. Uh, change this to your Redis password. So again, delete and the password for the sake of simplicity. Again, testing one, two, three. And I also see for the health check, your password should go here. Testing one, two, three. Let's see if we do not miss anything. Uh, set the Redis password and update the Redis password here. Actually, uh, yeah, I think there is no mention about the fact that you need to change uh, the health check. You need to change the health check. Trust me. Uh, then Redis password, your Redis password here. So again, delete a Redis password from here. Testing one, two, three. I think that was one of the last one. Then generate a strong GWT secret. You can do this like so. So what we can do here is write quit to save the file, then generate the key. We will copy paste the key. Make sure that you do not copy accidentally some uh, random digits. Open the patchmon YAML and W know where it is. GWT. Shit, there it is. So uh, delete this part. And just copy paste what we just created. I think that was the last part. So set a JWT secret in the backend service where it says like this. That's just, we, just what we just did. Oh my God. And uh, configure environment variables. So we don't need anything for the sake of testing. So we can just save and Docker compose up minus D. I think everything should be fine. So uh, no configuration file provided. Uh, Docker compose minus file uh, patchmon.yaml up minus D. I think this should do the job. So smash enter. And we are running and we're also downloading all the required containers for our patchmon to run successfully. So we're getting front end, we're getting the Redis, and we're also getting database uh, for which we have a Postgres and the backend of the patchmon itself. So this is going to take a couple of seconds before it's going to be up and running. And that's kind of everything we had to do to start a patchmon server. Right now we can type the Docker PS and we can see that we have uh, the front end, the back end. Uh, Postgres for a database in the Redis cache uh, also running for our Patchmon server. So now the only thing that we need to do is find out the IP address of this virtual machine, which is 172, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we don't need this. So open the browser and it's running behind a port 3000. So not the default HTTP port, not HTTPS, but the 3000 port. Um, and there we go. The Patchmon, Linux patch monitoring, latest release 136 and uh, sign into Patchmon. And so I'm ha actually having two issues here. Uh, one is an error message, course origin mismatch. Please set your URL and your environment variable. So let's fix this one first. And this one happens because in a WSL, uh, sorry, in, in the patchmon.yaml file, we have course uh, course origin is specified to the local host but we are actually running behind the ip address 172 23 84 and uh, 36 so you need to change course origin to the actual ip address behind which you are trying trying to access your patchmon so right quit and uh, i will run the docker compose again to apply the changes that we just did. Then we can go back to our front end. So again, log in. And here we have a second problem. Yesterday I was trying to set this up on my own without recording a video. And usually the first time when you will set this up, you will have a beautiful form here where you need to create your first time username, password, and, and all of this stuff. Apparently this form is still saved somewhere on my computer. So I will try to guess what I wrote yesterday and it's wrong. So now I'm going to try to troubleshoot where these credentials are actually stored.
And it was very simple. All the credentials are stored in uh, Postgres database, which we also run as a container. And I had my container deleted, but data directory for the Postgres were still there. That's why I still had a password from yesterday's setup. So now I've deleted everything and recreated everything with a Docker Compose minus F patchmon.yaml. And when you access the IP address behind port 3000, we get a first time setup form where we need to provide the first name, uh, last name, username, email address, which is going to be whatever, and a password, which is going to be testing one, two, three. Then we can create our admin account. We don't need to save it right now. And we get to the dashboard, which is pretty much empty right now. So hosts, we have zero repos, nothing, packages, automation, um, automation. We have this, but uh, basically that's it. So whenever you decide that, OK, it is time to add some new hosts, you just go to the hosts. And this is the beautiful, simple part. You click on add host, you call it uh, Alma Linux WSL, create a host group and you get just one single copy paste command, uh, paste it to your Linux CLI automatically your system is now being monitored by the patch mod. That's literally everything you had to do. You don't need to uh, adjust any configuration files or whatever. And right now, if we're going to go to our dashboard, we can already see that we have total hosts one. And here is our Alma Linux WSL with the unknown system host name for now, unknown operating system, uh, agent auto updates. Uh, yes. And after the refresh, so we already see that System host name is like this. Operating system is Alma Linux, agent version, uh, connection, WebSocket, everything is good. Reboot, no. Updates 133 and 31 pending security update. And we can go to the packages and we will see all of the packages that are up to date, as example. Update is available. We can also check what kind of security patches are waiting for us to do. And everything is happening like in a single place. And whenever you run this and monitor like hundreds or thousands of the Linux servers, then the real beauty starts to appear because it's just simple. It is really. And right now there is also like Docker in a beta version. By default, it's not even turned on. But if we'll go to our hosts, click on Alma Linux, then in the integrations, and just toggle the Docker, which is enabled, need needs updates. So right now it appears online again. And there we go. We already have information about all of our Docker containers. If you don't believe me, Docker PS, front end, back end, Alpine, um, Postgres, and Redis. So Redis, front end, database, and a back end. Everything we can see, container ID. Uh, repository, the tags, image ID, source GitHub, when it was uh, created. So a lot of the good informations. There are also possible automations that you can explore yourself, packages, repos that you can. Uh, I'm not sure if you can add your custom ones. Uh, no, those are actually repositories that I have on my Linux machine. So it has I have a Zabbix repository that I've used for some previous videos. And uh, and I believe the most uh, common question about all of this would be like, can we also update everything that we can see? Like right now we have one example host. We know that we have 133 packages, security updates pending. Can we just uh, click one button and uh, update? Um, as far as I know, like, no, this this thing is that's still uh, pending because uh, it involves also to worry about a security a bit more because it's going to be accessing the servers and actually running some commands. So uh, nobody wants to have some some nasty exploits uh, that allow you to hack the remote uh, servers through the Pashmon agent. Uh, that's why that is still working progress. But as far as it goes for just monitoring and collecting the data for this early state of the project, it is in a very solid state. So guys, I will going to wrap up here because this video has been already pretty much long. Uh, go out and explore uh, yourself. As you can see, the installation locally is free and it's not very complicated. So it's very much accessible for our, all of you. Give it a try yourself. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. And see you later in the next video. So thank you for watching and bye bye.